Ramesh Usman. I am a graduate student of Florida International University. I will be doing a video for my networking and telecommunications class. And this video is going to be for um, how to install a single ATA drive. Now, but before I move on, I would like to talk about you know what is a serial ATA and why we may need to uh, install second hard drives in our computers. Uh, serial ATA is uh, one easier to install uh, compared to the uh, internal IDEs. Uh, secondly, um, they are faster. Um, you have different flavors of ATA uh, serial hard drive which range from anywhere from 1.5 uh, gigabytes per second to uh, 6 gigabytes per second. And uh, serial ATAs also require no jumper settings like the IDEs. So if you're setting your drive, you, know, you don't need to worry about setting any jumpers and anything like that. Uh, another thing is that uh, they are hot swappable, which means that you know while you're running your operating system, you can add um, a device or remove a device, you know, without any interruptions. Uh, so you, as you can see, there are many advantages to using CL ATA cable. Also, you know, if you look at your um, case, you'll find out that the CL ATA interface has very thin cables, which makes it efficient for uh, you to be able to uh, run your PC and not worry about the cooling system. So now that we understand what are the um, the benefits of using uh, serial ATA, I'm going to go ahead and talk about why we may need to install a serial ATA in the first place. Uh, uh, these days we have uh, a growing need for uh, data storage. As you know, there's um, you know a lot of uh, music downloads, and we may want to exchange multimedia files and store a lot of photos on our computer, so we need a lot more um, uh, drive space to be able to accommodate all those uh, multimedia requirements. Um, secondly, hard drives are you know, very cheap. Uh, you can get um, a 300 gig hard drive for under $100, so that makes it much more feasible if you wanted to add a second hard drive to your computer. Um, after that, I will go ahead and talk about how to actually install a serial ATA on your uh, computer. But before I do that, I would like to uh, state that you know you need to meet certain requirements uh, in order to be able to have a serial ATA drive. One of them would be that you have to have a computer uh, which is running a system that is um, at least Windows 2000 or higher, or you should have 532 or anything higher than that. Secondly, you have to check your motherboard to make sure that you have um, expansion slots, okay, um, such as the PCI expansion slot. Okay, you can see this computer already has about three slots. Also, you have to make sure that you have a connector, okay, for your serial ETA cable. And um, also, you want to make sure you have an expansion bay uh, because you can't install a drive if you don't have an empty bay on your computer. Uh, also make sure that you have all the tools available. Okay, here's a Phillips screwdriver which you will need to mount the drive. Okay, you're gonna also need a serial ATA cable. Here's a serial ATA cable. Okay, this is the drive, of course. And also you want to make sure that you have, um, you know, clear space uh, to work with because you don't want a clogged up space and um, not be able to work efficiently. Now, once you have all the tools in place, also make sure you have to mount your screws. Very important. I almost forgot about that. Um, once you have all your tools in place, you want to make sure that you take the proper precautions when installing. First of all, you want to make sure you ground yourself properly. Um, you can ground yourself in one of two ways. Okay, you can use a wrist strap if you have it. In my case, I don't have a wrist strap. You now, the other alternative would be to ground yourself by touching the uh, computer chat. Okay. It allows you to, you know, ground yourself to avoid any ESDs, electronic electrostatic discharge, because drives are very fragile and fuel components are also sensitive to ESD. Now, once you ground yourself, okay, you also want to make sure that you have, um, you know, enough room to work with. And uh, the next stage of the process would be to go ahead and, you know, install the fuel, okay. You want to make sure that you remove the drive from um, the cover, the chassis cover properly. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start the mounting process. Okay. I'm going to grab my ATA cable. Okay. Okay. The ATA cable has two ends. You have the 
smaller end and you have a bigger end. So you want to make sure that you use the um, big side of the cable that connects right here. Okay. okay. And once you connect the cable, nice and firm, okay, you want to make sure that you put the drive, okay, you have to be careful with the cables. This is nicely fitted now. Okay. Okay. Now, once I mount the drive in the in the bay, then I want to make sure that I find a an expansion slot. Okay. In this case, I need a connector, so I can just take the other end of the serial ATA and connect it in onto the motherboard. Now, these cables are keyed, so there is no chance of. Um, you know, putting the cable upside down, um, that is by design. Now, once I mount this, I want to make sure that I find a power cable. Okay, my computer has uh, several power cables, so that shouldn't be a problem. And this is one of them, this is what it looks like. So, you're going to grab a power cable. Okay. Okay, now this is the power cable. Okay, so I want to make sure that I grab the right power cable. Okay, and um, this is also keyed, so I shouldn't be making any mistakes. Okay, now I want to make sure that it's nice and tight, firmly in there. Okay, now, once I have this mounted, okay, the next thing is to use my mounting screws. Okay, grab one at a time. Okay, so I can go in here. Okay. I'm going to move this a little bit. And I'll make sure that I mount this course properly. Oops. It's a little bit off from here. Okay, so I'm going to mount this, make sure it's properly mounted. And then I have all the screws. Okay, they should also be mounted properly. Okay, now once I mount the screws, screws nice and firm. Okay, the next thing is to grab my cover. Okay. Um, I check everything is nice and neat. Okay, it's all mounted properly except for loose cables. Make sure there's no loose cable. Okay. Okay, once you checked and make sure everything is mounted properly, no loose cables. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the cover. Okay. Now, once I replace the cover, it should take care of our internal installation process. Okay, the next stage would be to remove all the cables. Okay, so I'm going to put my computer. Okay, the next all the cables. And once I finish connecting the cables, then I want to make sure that I checked, put the power on. Okay, turn on the power. And once I turn on the power, the computer should automatically detect the drive. Okay, and once it detects the drive, um. I may be able to get into the BIOS and set up the BIOS, and if it doesn't... This is a simple demonstration of what the BIOS looks like. Um, you can access the BIOS when the computer boots up uh, during boot up by pressing the either the F1 key or you can do the delete key that opens up the screen, and the screen is the BIOS. Now, in the BIOS, you'll see uh, drive configuration, okay? When you hit drive configuration, you hit enter. And that brings up a sub screen, and on the sub screen you'll see uh, the serial ATA drive. Okay, go to serial ATA, and then hit enter, and that should automatically, you know, turn on the serial ATA, and then you have to reboot your computer. And once you reboot your computer, your drive should be ready. Now the last stage of the installation process is to format your drive. Um, 
You can use uh, your Google administrative tools, such as the Windows administrative tool to format the drive, or if you have any um, software uh, that formats your drive for you, you can also do that. Um, this should conclude the uh, drive installation, and you should be ready to enjoy your UCL ATA. And once again, my name is Usman. I would like to thank you for uh, watching this video. I hope you've learned you know, a lot about how to install the UCL ATA. Thank you, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you.